Welcome to Rider Club Radio, the podcast all about Common Rider. I'm Jeff. And I'm Common Rider. You d- And this is the podcast all about Common Rider, Rider Club Radio. This week we're gonna talk about Common Rider Ghost episode thirty, and we're gonna talk about Hold on a second here, sir. What? What am I doing? I'm just. You were hijacking my podcast. I'm moving the intro forward. You stop. This week, we watched Kamen Rider Ghost episode 30, Dobutsu Sentai Juoger episode 13, Kamen Rider Amazons episode 5, and Kamen Rider Drive Saga, Kamen Rider Chaser, since Overtime has subbed every tokusatsu that has ever existed in the history of mankind. <laughs> they got up and they were like, they woke up this morning and they were like, my god, what have we been doing all these years? Why don't we just sub everything? <laughs> just put all the episodes out at once, why don't we? So we've got all of that on the docket. Uh, hopefully we can finish it within uh, one podcast. <laughs> we'll uh, why don't we start it... by talking about Ghost Episode 30? So this week on Kamen Rider Ghost Episode 30, the Takoyaki Lady is dead. You remember last episode, uh, the funniest part of the, the the whole show, the Takoyaki Lady bit it. It wasn't a tease. She's dead for real. Yeah, literally cementing it as the dumbest death in the history of cinema. <laughs> Uh, uh, hang on, let's... Uh, calling Kamen Rider Ghost Cinema is very, very generous. Oh, He... Fucking she, savage. They put her in the ground, and there's a funeral. And uh, there's a million different people there. We don't know if they put life. her in the ground. They burned her. I don't know. They could have given her a sky burial. A sky burial? That's when they throw your body out and let vultures eat it. Oh. Oh, okay. That... that it sounds a lot more majestic when you call it a sky bear. It really does, doesn't it's, it? <laughs> it sounds like you, you, you lay them to rest in a plane or something, or a hot air you balloon. Like, you let their body go, and they float away into the sky. <laughs> <laughs> so she's dead, and uh, Necrom sees the, the whole funeral proceedings, and he's like, oh my god, all these humans with all their emotions. Hmm. This is so to, weird. To be fair, if you didn't understand human emotions that well, and you went to a funeral after your, your friend died, and half the people were smiling, you'd be like, these fuckers, they're happy she died on a park bench. <laughs> they're trying to trick me. <laughs> but that shit's not important. That's that's all over. Yuki, the girl who was possessed by the, the, the Houdini... She decides to go see her father again. She's like, well, it didn't work out the first time, but I'm sure it was a misunderstanding. So I'll go back to the Deep Connect building, I'll go see my father, and she runs off. And they let her in this time, and they pretend to be a normal office building just this once, and Steve Bills lets her in, and gives her tea, and he's like, yeah, sure, I'll help you find your dad. But, uh, you gotta help me first, because these Ganmas are forcing my company to build all sorts of evil shit. He doesn't tell him that. I'm a good guy. He says, he says I'm a good guy and my company's yeah. being fucked up. And Ghost and Makoto and all them are there and they're like, well, he's probably telling the truth. Yeah, you know, what do we have to not believe him about? He's a man we just met. Yeah, why would he, why would he lie? He's white. <laughs> white people never <laughs> lie. So they go to the room where the, the dad is supposed to be, but Igor is there and he stops them. So they have a big fight and there's a big explosion and the girl meets the dad, she bumps into the dad, and she's like, Oh, dad, I found you. And the dad shoves her on the ground. You, he shoves Yuki. And he's like, fuck this. I don't know who you are. Shoves her, calls her mom a whore. It was strange. It was very yeah, was strange choices in that scene. Weird part for the show. Uh, there's a big, huge explosion, and everyone just leaves. And uh, Yuki's like, well, uh, it's probably a bad idea. I met my father. I'm gonna go home. She goes home. And Ghost says, no, uh, we gotta go... This time we'll go to the abandoned warehouse, and maybe things will go better there. Right? Yeah, okay. So things they all... do go better there, though. That's true, he was right. You can he make fun correct. of him, but he was right in the end. They all round up the whole gang, they go to the abandoned warehouse, and they have, there's a big fucking fight there. There's a big, huge fight. There's a triple rider kick. There are 900 catchphrases said. There are 900 catchphrases said in flashback. Alan becomes fully good, 100%. For real this time, he made it. And uh, after they win, there's a big, like I said, big fight. One of the Gammizers gets blown up. Again. Again. I think for good this time. Okay. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, and then okay. Ghost uses his ghost power. He draws a circle on the dad, and it makes the Gamma go out of him and makes him good. So he says his final goodbyes to the girl, and then fades away. And that's the end of the episode. So Jeff, what did you think of Common Rider Ghost episode 3? 
I'm on two sides. I'm like straddling the fence on this one, kind of. But I'm like firmly planting my boots on either side of the fence as well. That sounds like a really painful position to be in. Yeah, yeah no kidding. <laughs> there were... This episode wasn't bad. Mm, yeah. I'll debate you I, on that. I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you points for that in a minute. <laughs> but there were so many points during this episode where I l- genuinely cringed. Ooh. Like, sometimes in Ryder, you're like, oh, that's corny, but, you know, it services the story, so it's fine. Are you talking about the triple Ryder kick? The Just... triple Ryder kick with their stupid fucking catchphrases yeah. one after another. He's like, I was... cringed off the fucking planet Earth it and was explored ba- space. <laughs> it was bad enough, and then it goes to Necrom, and he's like, F- I followed the dreams of my heart. <laughs> It's like, all right, buddy. Why I, are yeah. they just screaming things from the inside of Hallmark greeting cards anyway? <laughs> is my question. Because that's the extent of the characters in Ghost. When you see those catchphrases, that's their entire personality. Jesus Christ. Um, I l- the fucking Yuki became very one-dimensional for a period during this episode where she's just like, I'm scared. That's my character now. I wanted to like that plotline so bad. Yeah, me too. And I guess I liked the very end when they reunite. But even then, it was it, it felt a little hollow. She was building up for his birthday, and he died on his birthday. And she said, hey, I wanted to say happy birthday, Dad. And he says, thanks. And he fades away. Yeah, was... Why didn't she say I love you or something? That was the last word she was ever going to be able to speak to her father. Well. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Wouldn't it have been great if her dad was like, it's not my birthday, and then Dude, faded away? <laughs> what are you talking about before she can explain herself? He's, he's fucking dead. He's in hell. <laughs> why did he go to hell? I don't know. Guy probably masturbated a lot. That's true. That's true. Uh, He looks like it. (laughs) But, uh... Yeah, wouldn't that have been fucking hilarious if she was like, Happy birthday, Dad. And he's like, It's not my birthday. My birthday's in three months. Bye! (laughs) And disappeared. (laughs) He makes a silly face and a stupid hand gesture as he disappears. Just some dumb comedy shit. As he goes into the ether. When I say this episode isn't bad, I mean I'm getting enjoyment out of, uh things I shouldn't be getting enjoyment out of in the show. So you you figured out how to enjoy Ghost. Yes, I did. <laughs> so what is it this episode that you liked? Uh, I got so much enjoyment out of the fact that the characters... The villains have realized that the characters... Uh, our main characters are completely fucking brain dead. Mm-hmm. And they figured out the most simple fucking Scooby-Doo plot to get them to not suspect Deep Connect. And they fell for it, hook, line, and sinker, and that's hilarious. It's before it's even revealed. It's so ridiculously obvious. Like what would have been great is if like uh, Shibuya and Naruto were there, and they just kept making completely fucking like un- unbelieving, incredulous faces every time they agreed to help Mr. Bills. Yeah. <laughs> like if they were like, "Oh, Mr. Bills wants us to help the, the save his company," and they just looked at each other like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> Are you okay? Stop joking around. Let's let's fight Mr. Bills now. Are you serious? I love that. He steps out and he's like, I'm a good guy. And then Igor comes out and swings an axe at him. And Makoto, I think it's Makoto, who steps forward and literally goes, I guess Steve Bills is a good guy after all. And <laughs> Like, he read the fucking, like, episode direction. He, there was no the line script. there. He just read it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah, totally unscripted. It's breaking new ground on Ghost. Um... That's what I meant when I said this episode isn't bad. It is bad. Uh, it is there's bad. There's just parts in it that I find hilarious. Uh, the man shoving his daughter down on the ground was comical. That was yeah, it was pretty good. Let's was... just find stuff like this every episode. And go. Just, well, this this will be our review from now on. Let's just pick out the schlock that we find hilarious. In yeah. It. Uh, the fucking triple call of their stupid fucking catchphrases. How can that really be in a show that really exists that doesn't star like the Care Bears or something? <laughs> That's Ghost is basically Care Bears. It's, it really is. The characters have about the same amount of depth. I was really looking forward to the resolution of this plot, and also like Grandma Fumi's death was stupid as fuck, and then her funeral. There was literally a character who said she made the best takoyaki and we're supposed to think that she touched a bunch of people's lives because two other people said that they helped her yeah well you know the classic rule of storytelling jeff is tell don't show of course yeah <laughs> so ghost writers are just sticking to the rules okay like i was really thinking that at this funeral they were gonna the first guy was like yeah you know she helped me get my life back on track and got me where i am today 
And I was like, oh man, are there going to be some stories about that? That might be nice. And then the second guy's like, yeah, do you remember when she got mad? <laughs> she and made then the some... third guy's like, she made some sweet ass takoyaki. She made some mean takoyaki, that lady. And that's it. That's everybody's memories of her. <laughs> Uh, this Jesus episode, uh, I, I couldn't give a shit about Grandma Fumi because it was too funny when she died. Uh, I couldn't give a shit about Necron because they just, the show just beat it out of me. The, the, ev- yeah. like, anything I could possibly care. How many times has he turned good now? I think this is number three. If I had to guess. I think I'd... one would have been enough. One would have been enough. I there don't... is a storytelling rule, the rule of three, but it doesn't mean you tell the same story three times. I think ghost writers, they have the, the book of storytelling rules, but they're reading it, like, upside down or something. It's in, like, Czech. They got it. It was translated from English into French, into Czech, into Spanish, into Japanese. And they're like, oh, I see. Rule of three. Tell story three time. I couldn't give a fuck about the, the resolution of the girl's plot either. Because they didn't it, handle it at all. Like, she was like a cliff note in this fucking episode. She, yeah, it's it's... She drags the the protagonists around so they can have stupid, pointless fights, and then in the end, the the actual resolution of the plot line is so quick and feels so limp, and devoid of all emotion. The whole episode was just a big case of blue balls. I'll actually tell you the schlockiest moment that made me fucking crack up. Okay, all right. It's when uh, Necrom walks into uh, the abandoned warehouse and he's wearing his stupid poncho, his stupid old lady sweater poncho. Oh, Jesus Christ. And he eats takoyaki while fighting the fucking monsters. Uh, yeah, I remember I was watching that and I was like, am I supposed to like feel something at this scene? Is this supposed to be like badass? Or Is like this a... supposed to be like triumphant yeah, or something? Sh- like a... He's shoving takoyaki balls into his fucking mouth hole. It, it misses the mark, that's for sure. I I laughed at that. I did. I laughed. That's what I felt. I felt uh, uncomfortable humor from the scene. That's what I got. Well, it drew something out of you. Ghost gets feelings from you if you just watch it like you watch a terrible B-movie. <laughs> also, I laughed really hard at the funeral scene when... Um, what's your face? Akari is like, we should get, we should see her off with a smile and then... Her face tries to ma- mimic the human emotion of smiling, <laughs> but she's like never seen another human being smile before, so she just makes her mouth wide with her teeth showing. <laughs> yeah, Akari had a great arc where she was trying to get a golden feather to, to obtain human emotions <laughs> in this episode. It was very compelling. Call forward. It's not a call back. <laughs> oh yeah, it's... This is very, this is layered humor. It might be too much for some of you. You'll understand that joke in about 20 minutes when we start talking about something else. Oh. So in conclusion, the best way to approach Ghost is ironically from the side. It took me a long time to realize that the only enjoyment I'm going to get out of this show is laughing at it. Yeah, well, it's a sad realization, I guess. Well, Grandma's dead. Oh, uh, Grandma's What can you do? She's done. Also, uh, Makoto looks really nice in a, a suit. Uh, Takeru does not. No. He looks fucking ridiculous with his orange-ass blonde hair. He looks like a little kid playing dress-up. <laughs> he really he, Like does. he got into his dad's closet. His dad's in the next episode. Oh, boy. Spoilers. Y- are you hyped for the next episode of Ghost? Oh, God. Is that a real question? No, no. You don't have to answer. <laughs> I already does know. anyone ever legitimately ask each other that? Someone does. Are you hyped for the next episode of Ghost? Yeah, I'm also hyped that I get a fucking proctology exam next time I go to the doctor. <laughs> well, some people might get hyped for that. Some, yeah, some, don't judge. I'm judging. You judge, yeah. <laughs> That's enough of Ghost. Comparing Ghost to a proctology exam is pretty generous for Ghost. Oh. Oh. Why is... I have a question about Ghost. Alright, launch your question. Why is Makoto still, like, the edgy character? Like, he's done nothing edgy for, like, 30... It's, like, episode 30 now. It's been 20 episodes since he did anything edgy or dark. And he's still, like... Has, his upgrade is, like, edge mode upgrade, and his bike has chains on it like he's fucking Ghost Rider. His upgrade is literally the edgy ghosts. It's yeah. Edgy, edgy ghost. <laughs> ghost on the edge. Why is it still him? Because um, he has one trait. And that's to be the, the like, Vegeta of the show. And mm. so he will stick to that forever. 
He's like Vegeta during the very last part of Dragon Ball Z where he just stands with his arms crossed the whole time. Yeah, and goes, hmm. Like, he just stands in the background while the other characters go to a tournament and he has his arms crossed. Like, say what you want about Alan's arc. It sucks. I'll be the first to admit it sucks. But he has one. He's got an arc. Makoto's arc... I think Makoto's arc was actually handled fairly well. It was it was good. When I go back to it now, it's it makes real world sense, which might not translate perfectly to something so completely out there like Ghost that has no real human beings in it. <laughs> it was but so long ago now. He's like, I want my fucking sister back. I want my fucking sister back, and I'll beat everyone to get it. I'll kill you to get my sister back. Mm. And then Takira's like, here's your sister. And he's like, all right, cool. Problem solved. I liked Makoto's arc too. It was one of my favorite parts of the earlier episodes, but it was a long time ago now, and since then his characters remained pretty much static. It's like, Makoto was my favorite character to begin with. Yeah. And every time he transforms into his regular form, and you hear the you know but chirimino bum 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 bum, I get that little spark of enjoyment back. Mm-hmm. And then he stands around and does nothing afterwards, or jobs. To show that Takara is powerful, or fights mooks. I'm like, someone's, oh yeah, he's a secondary writer in a post-decade series. Never mind. Someone's got to do the the all important job of fighting mooks. <laughs> someone's got to have shit going on in the background while the main character looks cool in the foreground. There's also a moment in this episode where Makoto looks at Takara and says, "What's the play, Takara?" And I'm like, "Why are you deferring to him?" <laughs> He hasn't been able to make up his mind on anything the whole fucking series. Why is he the leader? I don't... I, why are you asking me? I don't... make. That's like making Donatello the leader of the Ninja Turtles. He's smart and he can figure shit out, but he's not going to be able to lead your fucking team. Yeah. Yeah, Ex- and Donatello... Ghost can't sm- isn't smart and can't figure things out. Yeah, yeah, Donatello at least has those two things going for him. Takeru doesn't. Here's it's a like, piece of shit. It's like making Michelangelo the leader if Michelangelo was a sad sack <laughs> who just whined around all the fucking time. Oh, uh, well. What can you do? That's enough of ghosts. That's enough I can, of ghosts. I can tell I'm having trouble keeping you in the conversation about ghosts. I can tell. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, well, Jeff's saying this shit about ghosts. What do I say? Who gives a fuck about I ghosts? Mean, who gives a... Like, I, I, I have no particular strong feelings about ghosts at this time. <laughs> It's a good thing you're doing a podcast about it. <laughs> I can't help it. I got into this. We're like fucking a million episodes into this show. There's no going back now. Do you want to hear some news, Jeff? Sure, I'll hear some news. Okay, so you saw this. I showed you this earlier. Uh, Ghost Infinity Soul got revealed this week. Yeah, I saw it. Uh, what did you think of that, Jeff? You know what? The actual design of it isn't that bad. Hmm. I like From it. From the little image that we see, anyway. Yeah, we see, uh, it's like chest, it's like a bust of it. It has yeah. a very, like, Necrom-style hoodie thing with, like, the, um, collar part. Yeah, or, I know what you're talking about, yeah. Whatever the, the fuck it's actually called. It's got, like, that huge, uh, collar thing in the middle of the chest, yeah. Yeah. I getcha, the folds. And it has, like, a cool helmet shape, and it's just, it has, like, that... Do you remember when the icon, the DX icons first started getting shown and everybody was, like, super sad that the icons had this, like, see-through plastic on them that had, like, speckles of, uh, glitter all in it? Yes, I hate glitter on Rider Toys. That is what his form looks like. It's just clear plastic with glitter all over it. And that's my only problem with it. Kind of reminds me of Wizard Infinity, actually. Wizard Infinity is, like, silver. Yeah, it's still, like, very shiny. It is very shiny, but it it wasn't clear plastic with speckles all over it. Yeah, that's true. We don't know about the speckles yet. We don't have enough details. No, I mean, it could look completely different. It does look very sparkly, though. I kind of like it. It's, it's, uh, from what we can tell, it's, it's not a clusterfuck. It's not totally over-designed. It's, it's just like a simple white silver sort of see-through ghosty looking thing, which I can I will, get behind. It has a I stupid reserve, rainbow horn. I'll reserve my opinion until we get a better shot of it. Right now, I don't know if I'm on board with it. Yeah, it's, that's probably smart. It ain't no type Trideron. No. But it'll do. 
there are very few type triterons in the world these days. Yeah. Um, also, surprising absolutely no one, uh, Ghost's movie, the, the movie coming out this year, is going to have Dark Ghost in it. Yeah, shocking. Shocking. He, he uses the bad guys. He turns into a bad guy's. Such as Napoleon and Charles Darwin. History's greatest monster, Charles Darwin. Who can forget the countless genocides that Charles Darwin committed. <laughs> Put him right alongside Napoleon. Nap- <laughs> That's who you were waiting for, wasn't it? Napoleon? I was waiting, yeah, we got a solo out of Napoleon. Uh, you can't really see many details, but it's cool to know that he's actually going to be in a movie. And not How just... does that make you feel that it's Dark Ghost that's going to use it? Well, Jeff, I'm a pretty edgy guy myself, so... Oh, God. <laughs> For those who don't know, Liam fucking loves edgelords. I like I like them when they're done well. They're my preferred character. There's no such thing as done well edgelords. Yeah, they're yeah. all shitty. Kamen Rider Knight would like to speak to you. Uh, I said well done. Whoa, whoa, buddy. I didn't say shit. Whoa, buddy. What's it like to have such awful taste? I don't know, why don't you ask the mirror? That's where your husband lives. <gasps> That's so good, that was so good. <laughs> that took me two seconds, but I was like, oh my god, that was so good. That was, that was I, I so like that layered. genuine, like, slow build-up into... <gasps> <laughs> Oh, it's 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 uh it's multifaceted. It was a multifaceted comeback. I'll have to. I'm gonna bow to that. <laughs> it so was too good. Dark ghost is coming. Everybody who wants to have a slightly darker colored ghost figure can look forward to it. Yeah, I think it's the base dark ghost form is like a gray or like a silver something. It's tough to tell. He's got he's got a spawn face. Yeah, his face is just common rider Kiva's face. Yeah, it's it's like a it's like ghost face, but it's like more spiky and fiery, and you know, it's, like, it's more edgy. Yeah, it's more edgy. Like we haven't used that word already. It's it's the edgiest edge. Give us a dollar every time we say the word edgy. I wish. Let's set up the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> um. Also, this week, Common Rider Amazon, the original show, not Amazon's, is getting a Blu-ray box set. Do you want to guess what the price is, Jeff? Oh, God. This is a, a dangerous game. This is... <laughs> let's play the Toei Blu-ray box set game. What do you think? How much is it going to cost? 250 U.S. dollars. <laughs> it's 260 U.S. dollars. I was so close! You were so close. You were the closest without going over. Yeah, fuck. I get that new boat. You you win... Yeah, you win a, <laughs> a, a treadmill. Congratulations. That's fine. I can hang my coats on it. <laughs> <laughs> I would be on the prices right, and they'd be like a new treadmill, and I'd be like, "Oh, uh, <laughs> thanks, Bob." Bob's dead. Is he? I actually don't know. I know Drew Carey is the host of the show, though. I uh, I bet Bob's very old right now, probably somewhere. Drew Carey actually looks skinny now, which is the grossest, weirdest thing. Yeah, I've ever yeah. Seen in my life, I heard about that. He lost a lot of weight. Well, speaking of, like, really old people, I wanted to drop this in at some point. Uh, okay. You, mu- you might remember me saying when we were trying to figure out how to pronounce uh, Chancellor Edith's name mm-hmm. in Ghost, that I pointed out that I have an old aunt named Edith, or I did, and uh, I found out that my Aunt Edith is still alive. Oh. And she is 96 years old. Holy shit. <laughs> Watch it's going to turn out that General Edith is 96 years old. <laughs> They're the same person. I would I would actually start investigating if that was if that turned out. <laughs> I, would, I would travel to Japan. I have to come to the bottom of this. Yeah, Edith is not the old sage. Edith is actually my aunt. Yeah. That's the real spoiler. <laughs> Ghost is ruining my life. Speaking of Gamba Generals, uh Seiji Takai was appearing next episode. Yeah, he is. He's got a weird haircut. Yeah, and it hopefully means that Igor's gonna die. God, I hope so. God, Igor. Igor is the shittiest character on this show, and that's a very difficult thing to achieve. Everybody's fighting for that title constantly. It's a strong competition this year. It's the shittiest (laughs) character. (laughs) Igor comes out on top, though. He's he's truly head and shoulders above the rest. Who is the best character in Ghost, Liam? Ah, oh. Shibuya and Narita. <laughs> They're not on screen long enough to make us hate them. <laughs> you see just enough that you can imagine the rest of their lives, and you're like, ah, I'm sure it's not so bad. 
I'm sure they're fine people. The Unlike funny part else. is, when I watched, uh, one of them runs in and says, oh, Grandma Fumi died on a park bench. Mm. And everybody's like, oh, no. And then uh, one of them runs in later and says, more bad news. Like he was the first one that ran in. <laughs> but he's not the first one that ran in. He's the other one. They're both... Uh, they're, I don't know. They're tuned. They keep each other in touch. I don't think they actually play Shibuya and Narita. They both play both of them and just switch out. Yeah, I bet in the credits for each episode they just change the names and see if anyone notices. <laughs> just fuck it. They're like the Olsen twins playing the same character. Oh god, it's, it's like Full Hills all over again. Oh. oh. I watched the first episode of Fuller House. Why? It Why? fucking sucks. Why would you do that? Well, oh, this sounds like a good idea. I'll watch Fuller House. The middle one. The middle daughter, she grew up real hot. So I thought I'd watch it. And was it worth it? No. There you go. They act like the dog's still alive in it. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Like, they have a new dog, and they act like it's the same dog, and I'm like, that dog's fucking dead. Come on. Don't, don't play lie. with me. Yeah, don't play games with me. Uh, Anyway. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's the end of my news. That's, that's the I end got. of the Fuller House cast. That's the end of Fuller House, yeah. Hopefully that's the end of it. <laughs> funny funny story, uh, all the original cast except uh, the daughters leave at the end of the first episode, and they're not in it anymore. <laughs> that's smart. That's it. Yeah, they're all gone. <laughs> salvaging their careers. <laughs> they don't have careers. Oh, that's true. I forgot. I guess... Everybody except for, except for Uncle Joey has a career. Mm-hmm. Very deservedly, because he's Canadian. Nobody wants a Canadian. John Stamos has got to save himself. Yeah, John Stamos has got to appear in all those fucking yogurt commercials. He can't let Fuller House drag his career down. <laughs> anyway, why don't we talk about Animal Sentai Juoger episode 13? What'd you think about it, Liam? How'd you uh, feel? I, I liked it. It was a Leo episode, so I'm sure you're all about it. I am. I'm always about Leo. Leo's my homeboy. Uh, this episode kind of encapsulates what I like so much about Jojo in that the main plot are really the... Like, the action is driven by a character conflict or a character... Uh, like, a, a, a deeper character drama mm. that drives the action. Even if, it, even if the character drama itself is episodic, it's always there and it's always causing shit to happen in the episode. Like you said, the characters have a roundness to them, and their 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 personalities are constantly affecting what's happening. And in this episode especially, is all about uh, a rivalry between Leo and Yamato. They meet a girl. An imagined rivalry. An imagined rivalry. Leo falls in love with a girl, and the girl falls in love with Yamato. So it's like a love triangle. It's, Except Yamato has no idea it's happening. Yeah, which is hilarious. The best part about this episode is that it could have just been a slice of life. There was almost no need for the action in yeah, the episode. There's a guy drilling into a mountain. And that's the plot, but mostly it's just Leo trying to resolve his shit with this girl. Yeah, Leo wants to get this girl, and it's obvious she has some sort of hang-up on Yamato, so Leo tries even harder, and uh, he makes a huge fucking fool of himself, as you would imagine. <laughs> that's that's a good lesson to teach kids that I think we all wish we knew in high school. <laughs> it's, if a girl doesn't like you, just fucking leave it. Just leave it yeah. alone. He says it outright, too. He says, I'll back off, because that's just what a man has to do. Yeah. <laughs> the action itself was pretty... was al is always good in Jojo. And there was a cool, like, mountain climbing kind of thing, and there was a very obvious CGI rock that was going to be an axe later, and you could tell. Oh, yeah, the, the big and, stupid looking axe rock. And when it happened, I was, it was still exciting. I knew it was going to happen, and it was still exciting, because it turned out to be Cube Bear. I can't really get into the robot action. Really? It's not like Sun Vulcan where it's just the same clips over and over again. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it still feels so impersonal compared to the fights on the ground. I like seeing them like sweeping around and leaping around and doing all their own things individually and having team-ups and stuff and throwing each other at the enemy. Yeah, it's actually when they kind get of the them... opposite in the giant robots when you think about it because the robots are so huge and bulky they can't really move in them very well. So all the action is very slow and methodical. Yeah, I mean the robot looks cool. It's a cool looking robot. They, they, I think they nailed it this season but like I just, I, I, don't know, I think it's a personal thing because I was the same about Sun Vulcan and I was the same about Geo Ranger. where like the second they get in the robot I just sort of like tune out and it's like, mm, fuck it. Uh, Maybe, yeah, I like the pretty robot much done. stuff. I get a kick out of the fact that everything the robot does is done by spinning a cube. Yeah, I do like that. 
this episode showed how awful it would be to have to be around Leo in person. <laughs> like, if he was a real person, I would never want to be friends with him, but he is so entertaining to watch. <laughs> yeah, he would, he would get up in your shit a lot, but that's his character. And Tusk has some funny moments in this episode as well, where he just continually steps into bear traps over and over and over again. Oh, yeah, that's his gag. He steps into bear traps. It was it was overall a really good episode. Um, I look forward to every new episode of Juozer far more than I do most anything else we watch. Yeah, um, there's not a whole lot to say. I do like that um, this episode is constantly like we're constantly sticking to uh, like an overarching plot. We're still talking about the Birdman. Like, the whole reason the girl gets involved is because she saw the Birdman on a mountain. Yeah. And so they, they ask her to take them to the, the location. So it's like, there's still that constant reminder of like, oh, by the way, there's something happening. So Sticking it keeps to the you, main plot's good. It keeps you hooked while they dole out these little, uh, these little episodic plots in between. It's, it's a good formula for a Sentai show. It's funny that the entire episode ramps up to a single gag at the end that made me guffaw like an idiot and laugh out loud when it turns out the girl's only interested in Yamato because she reminds he reminds her of his parakeet. Yeah, and he's like, oh, not not even an eagle. A parakeet. <laughs> and then he crouches down sadly, and they're like, oh, he's acting like a parakeet! And they all start taking photos of him. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. I loved you, Oger. Poor Yamato just can't catch a break. Yeah, he has to take care of uh, four adult, full-grown, human-being-type people. Who are basically children. Yeah. The look on Yamato's face when he comes out of the store and sees Leo, like, hitting on all the girls. Mm -hmm. That solid look of, what in the fuck are you doing, <laughs> is perfect. <laughs> it's the look that any of us would have. Uh, Juoger's great. If you're not watching Juoger and you just skip over this part, you won't hear me say this, but fucking watch Juoger. It's really good. Maybe your sentiment will reach them across the ether. I hope so. I hope so, too. It's really great, and I don't hear a lot of people talking about it in the toku community. Really? I'm sure the well, Sentai people are... I mean, if you go are... to, like, the Sentai side Yeah, stuff. I'm sure the Sentai people are loving it. That's enough of Juoger. Why don't we talk about Kamen Rider Amazon's episode 5? Yeah. Um... Why don't you lead into how you feel about it because I watched episode 6 and I want to make a clear differentiation between 5 and 6 in my mind so yeah. that we don't go over it. Okay, because I, I didn't watch 6. Uh, I just watched 5. And we're just going to talk about 5. We'll talk about 6 next week. Yeah, we had too much shit to watch this time around. I can't yeah, blame you. We got blasted. Jeff wanted to watch 5 and 6 and the Necrom thing. Yeah, I just wanted I like, to watch everything man. that came out. Yeah. <laughs> Although I'm really glad I didn't watch the Necrom thing, because if it's anything like this episode... Oh boy, I'm not looking forward to the Necrom thing. No, we oh might boy. just skip that one. We'll see, we'll see. Um, Amazon 5, Amazon's 5 I think is the weakest one so far. It's it's the one about the bus monster. A bunch of people mm, get on a bus, I the bus drives that. I under an that. overpass, and then everyone's dead. And um, it reminds me a lot of an episode of Kuga. It yeah. was very, very cool, as in, like, the, the, the monsters are up to something, they're teaming up, people are dying in a really violent way, and the common Rider has to go and solve it, and there's some sort of person involved as well. In this case, it's uh, Haruka's sister, or, Har yeah, Haruka's sister is getting all up in it. They're taking special precaution to not call her his sister. Well, okay, adopted mm -hmm. sister. Like she, he adoptive. literally describes her as, it's... My adopted mom's daughter. Yeah, because they're gonna fuck later. So <laughs> no kidding. But the, it's it. It reminded me of an episodic early Heisei episode, which is fine. Mm -hmm. I like early Heisei, but I liked Amazon the way it was. I liked Amazon with this weird, like, uh, pseudo western, uh, quasi horror, weird tone. And this one felt a lot more just like I sat down and watched an episode of Kamen Rider from two thousand one. I can see that. I will say I agree. It is probably the weakest of the lot. The fact that I watched five and six back to back greatly helped five. I bet because it's like a two parter, right? Like it doesn't yeah. resolve. Yeah, the the big turtle monster on the ceiling is not killed. But I do. I, I still like all the characters. Haruka is. Uh, but uh, the the team is as always good. They always they they're always growing on me. Haruka basically just wanders around the whole time from place to place, trying to figure out what the fuck he wants to do. Yeah, okay. he, he he's still coming to terms with being an Amazon. 
he's uh he's he's developing more on that line but he, he's, he's he's gained this like insight into his inner self that he loves fighting and killing which has got to be terrifying for a wimp like him I think I, I like that because it, it it's the Amazon cells taken over. I think yeah. he, like he as his medicine starts to fail more and more as he he spends more and more time as an Amazon. It it, it contorts his mind just like it warps his body. I like that angle. That that it's an angle that I don't think many other common writers have taken. Where it's like being a common writer to be a common writer is to slowly destroy yourself. Mm, I think that's been done before. It's okay. It's been done a few times, but I yeah. like that angle. It's a little bit uh, more of a drawn out piecemeal kind of thing this time, instead of just uh, dumping it towards the end of the series. Like, oh, by the way, you've been turning into a monster this whole time. Yeah, yeah. Which happens in several series. Yeah. There's there's also like a, a level playing field in Amazons that I like, where. Uh, Neither of the main characters are so insanely powerful that they breeze through fighting monsters. Yeah, there's no ridiculous upgrades or anything like that. Yeah, there's a level playing field because they're all just monsters. Even the heroes are just monsters. They're not, Mm -hmm. like, super monsters. They have, like, a belt that ups their combat potential, but it's still a struggle every time they fight. Yeah. It still feels gritty and a little more real than most Kamen Rider fights. We haven't met an A-Clash an A-class Amazon yet. Wasn't the Ant Queen an A-class, or...? She was a B-class. Was she B? Yeah, Yeah, okay. all of the ones that Haruka has struggled against have been B-class. Okay, okay. So Haruka's basically a B-class. Yeah, I'd say. Even with the belt, yeah. Yeah, Jin might be an A-class, because he, he does a lot better. Jin breezes over a lot more stuff. He hasn't had a whole lot of fight, like, in the same way Haruka does... He usually just shows up after the monster's already been beat around a little bit and then kills them. Yeah, it's true. He always has help. Uh, they always have help. Everybody always has help. I understand why the leader of the team doesn't want Haruka on the team. Because he doesn't know what Haruka wants. He could just turn around and eat them the fuck up. He's a monster. Yeah, there's that bit where he... I like that you learn more and more about the the, the team and their the way they feel about things and their, their, their desires and their beliefs and stuff like that. The yeah. team leader comes out and he says, you know, we all do this for money. We all know what's going on in here, except for uh, except for Mamoru, who just wants cheeseburgers. But uh, a guy like Haruka, who has an unclear motivation, he, he's, he's, he's an unknown. I don't want he, him on the team. You don't know if he's got your back at any time. Yeah. You don't know anything about him. He's a coward. I understand all that. But is it necessary for everyone to be, like, a huge fucking asshole to him at all times? Yes. Like, Everyone except for his not sister. Throughout Amazons, like what continually happens is Haruka shows up and he's like, "Oh, I'm turning into a horrible fucking monster. What should I do?" And everybody's like, "What are you a fucking pussy? You goddamn <laughs> coward! Why don't you figure out the fucking big questions of existence, like what you're here for? You fucking puss." <laughs> and I'm like, "Really? He's like a tiny child." Like, he's, he's an adult by age, but look at him. A stiff breeze would break him in half. He's Yeah, he's a twig. He's a tiny baby man. Also, uh, we learn through episode 5 and 6 that Mamoru might be mentally handicapped. Like, yeah, he... they. He's like a tiny child. There's a bit when he, they're talking about him being treated in a hospital, and he's lying in a hospital bed, and they're, like, rattling baby toys in his face to try and calm him down. At first, I thought it was just, like, a quirk of his that he acted like a kid, but now I'm starting to think maybe the Amazon cells are in his brain. Yeah, I'm thinking there might be something, like, wrong with him. I'm Like, genuinely. And maybe that'll come up at some point. Or maybe in Japan, nobody gives a shit about that, and that's just maybe, his character. Maybe it was a gag. Yeah, who knows? I don't know. But, uh... It becomes more and more obvious as you watch that he's like a tiny child trapped in a, a man's body. Yeah. He's... He's like uh he's like Captain Marvel. A little he's a little kid with an incredible power. He turns into a drill monster. Just like Captain Marvel. Just like Captain Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> Sidebar. Stan Lee did a bunch of comics for DC during mm-hmm. the nineties. Called Just Imagine Stan Lee creating whatever. Yeah. And he he did Stan Lee creating Shazam. And Shazam was a big hairy orange Hulk monster. That Billy Batson turned into against his will. 
Okay. So it was the Hulk. killed monsters. And all the other Just Imagine Stan Lee created things are just uh, DC superheroes, but with the origins and powers of the Marvel heroes that Stan Lee made. <laughs> <laughs> well, like being bitten by a radioactive bat or something? Or <laughs> bitten by a radioactive Superman? Well, like, Superman is basically Captain Marvel from Cap- from Marvel Comics. He's like a space cop. Oh, okay. Who uses a laser pistol. That's kind of weird. But, uh, my point is, you start to understand why Stan Lee created stuff like, uh, Stripperella. <laughs> and the the Blue Streak and stuff later in yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he lost the spark a little bit. <laughs> maybe. Just I love maybe. Stan Lee, though. I'm not saying nothing about Stan Lee. Jack Kirby made all of the shit for him, but it's still fine. He's still yeah. a good guy. <laughs> Oh, well. That's neither here nor there. We're talking about Amazons. Well, are we done talking about Amazons? Um, was there something in episode five? The scene on the bus, when they all get on the bus and point guns, there's a moment when uh, Shido, the leader, is like, he yells for the lady, and she kneels down in front of the bus and puts her hand on the bumper, underneath the bumper, for like two seconds, and then the door opens. Yeah. Did she, did she hack the bus through the bumper? Maybe Japanese what buses have, <laughs> like, an emergency switch onto the bumper. Maybe that's something that, like, a Japanese viewer would immediately know. Yeah. But for me, I, I was like, what the fuck just happened? I saw that, and I figured she was hitting a switch. I figured it was, like, a Japanese bus's thing. Maybe. Also, what I was going to say is when they get on the bus and point the guns, that goes on too long, and it's kind of awkward. Amazon's kind of has that problem in some of its scenes where it just like it just goes on a little long in some points. My only problem with Amazon so far has been uh, the sound effects and soundtrack are all over the fucking place. I like the soundtrack. Sometimes the soundtrack really fits, like the lady singing that comes mm. up when like crazy shit happens. Yeah, stuff's yeah. revealed. That's great. It always punctuates. I love that one. But then there's stuff like the kabuki sounds when. The big man is on the screen, the boss man, which is yeah. weird as fuck. A lot of and Amazons. there's stuff like when Haruka uses the motorcycle, they play the sound of an airplane taking off in the background, like a stock sound. It's because it's so fast. That's stupid as fuck. <laughs> Don't do that. It's because an airplane happens to be taking off right behind the, the camera every time he rides same it. moment. Yeah. But it's not it. mixed into the audio mix at all, so it's just like the normal sound of the scene, but then there's also like a really loud plane taking off sound. Yeah, it is kind of weird. It takes me out of the scene every time. It's comical. It's like well, a comedy beat, almost. Like, look how ridiculously fast his cartoon motorcycle is. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't say I have a big problem with the soundtrack. I like it. It's kind of dreamlike. But, yeah, yeah I, I, I do agree the sound design can be weird in some places. Speaking of dreamlike, let's talk about Common Rider Drive Saga. Common Rider Chaser. Wait, what is? why is this dreamlike? Because this movie is shot like a fucking college student's final exam art house <laughs> film. <laughs> There was a scene in Kamen Rider Chaser that I almost got sick watching. Was it the scene when he cuts his own chest open? No. What? That's... Uh, I'm not scared of uh, ketchup, so that didn't okay. bother me. <laughs> what did you get sick watching? The one where you, they spew the shit all over Go? No. That was uh, just basic Three Stooges style comedy. I always approve of that. Okay. What made me sick is uh, when Chaser... Heart and brain are all laying in the middle of the empty pool. Mm. And the camera does 360 around them for 20 minutes straight <laughs> at, at like 45 miles per hour. And after like five minutes of that, I was like, oh god, my stomach kind of hurts. Oh. Is that not how you see the world every day? It was. Uh, do you do 360s around people when you're talking to them? Yeah, it's really tiring. <laughs> it, it made me kind of sick to my stomach a little bit because there was like. It wasn't shot in like a, a a higher frame rate and or slowed down or anything. So there was like a little there was a blur at the edge during the whole time, and it just oh, made yeah, me feel yeah. kind of sick watching it. 
Yeah. But that's not even, like, where the art house shit comes in. Like, the beginning where Proto-Zero is fucking crucified in the middle of the ocean of smoke with one spotlight. I was like, this looks like it belongs in fucking the jar. (laughs) Don't you dare put the jar on the same level as this. (laughs) It just looked like it was something out of some shitty art house college student film school film. Like someone trying to be so deep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, also, yeah. Also, it didn't sound like Chaser's actor was doing the voice of Proto-Zero during that he whole wasn't. scene. It was definitely someone else. Yeah, it was definitely somebody else. Which is weird, because when it was still not known to the audience, when it was still a spoiler, it the was Chase was Proto-Zero, it was his voice, and now that everybody knows, they don't use his voice. I don't know. What are I they don't doing? Know. I don't know. Did Maybe you like they the just, movie? They made that scene later. Maybe. And they didn't bring him back. What uh, did you think about the film, though? It was all right. Yeah, I have to say I agree. It was it was okay. It was kind of underwhelming because during most of the movie, you don't really get the character Chaser that you're used to. Like he's acting like some wiener. I I was interested in it when I first, like, when you see the start of his arc, and he says, I want human emotions, and that's uh, that's going to be his main conflict. I, I, I was kind of down with that. It was a little cliche. The robot who wants to feel human emotions, yeah. I get it. But it's a, a story that I like a lot when it's done well. It has, yeah. it has a lot of really good potential. This wasn't really done well, I don't think. It wasn't done that well. It's, it's not like... A, his revelation and his his decision to not have emotions doesn't really have anything to do with the emotions themselves, but just that they're they're a bad guy. They were given to him by a bad guy, and they're gonna turn him into a bad guy. They're gonna turn really... him into like a nothing. He's just gonna it's... live inside her giant fake foam tits forever. Yeah, it's not really as internal as I was expecting it to be. The his motivation. I guess that's, it sets itself up to be this big character thing, and in the end it just kind of is about this new evil roid mute called Angel, and then Chase forgets and they decide never to talk about it again. Now let us never speak of this again. (laughs) It was nice to see, it was nice to see the old crew again, I wish there was was more... That was very nice. Yeah, I wish there was a little more Ganon, Rena, and uh, uh, Q... But, Q, Q wasn't even in it, was he? Yeah, I don't, I don't remember Q appearing yeah. at all in this. There is a, a lot of arena in it. Yeah. There's actually one scene that pissed me off a little bit. What was that? It's when, um, Chase, I like how incredulous you are. When was that? Well, I mean, like, you <laughs> legit got pissed off? What is this? I almost got pissed off. Okay. Maybe I did a little, but it's during the scene when he walks out and he's like, Krim, I want to feel human emotions. And Krim and Rena are looking at, uh solar eclipse yeah and they continually interrupt they're screaming the whole time yeah. when they're doing doing their lines and they continually interrupt their own lines to go wow yeah Woo! oh my god and for like the first five minutes that was funny and enjoyable for the next hour and a half it wasn't <laughs> that scene goes on a really long time the point like, the joke is that, oh, they're like, ah, human emotions aren't so great while they're enjoying them so yeah. much, but, like, that takes 30 seconds to get across, maybe a minute. It went on forever. Yeah. <laughs> Towards the end, I, I think I legitimately said, all right, can we move one, please? It's, uh, keep it, keep it fucking short and simple. Don't waste my fucking time. There's also almost a sex scene in this movie. There's a lady takes her shirt off. You don't see her tits, but she you, takes her shirt she off. She takes her shirt off. You see a, that sweet back action. <laughs> you see a lot of dudes shirtless in this movie. Like, everybody rips their shirt open. That's another thing that was kind of weird about this movie. Uh, someone gets shot, Chaser stabs himself in a the chest, there's almost tits. It's kind of weird. It's, yeah. it's not... It's like... It, it reminds me a bit of Gaim Gaiden when Baron watched his dad hang himself and his mother <laughs> take a bunch of pills. Not quite to that level. Well, okay, not quite to that level, but it's like it's it's this weird kind of like tone whiplash that I'm getting in the show. Where I'm like, what is this, Garo? Like, I, I don't want to see tits in my common Rider. My only problem with that scene where he rips the thing out of his chest is, like, they went to a fucking Halloween city to get, like, the red food coloring to the, put in their water. Sir, give me your scene. fakest blood. I want this to look completely like red water. I don't want anything else. I want it to leave stains on their skin immediately so you can absolutely tell it's not real blood. Hey, why was Chase bleeding? He's a robot. He's a really good robot. 
Okay. It was oil. That's why it looked so fake. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, that must be. It was colored oil. There it you was go, red Jeff. oil. You, you defeated your own argument. I, I cracked the code. A lot of people are probably listening to this right now like, Jeff, you fucking asshole. You're always talking about how you wish Common Rider had better cinematography in it. Well, there's a difference between good cinematography, where things are shown in an artful manner, and uh, spinning a camera around three people in the middle of a pool for 20 minutes. Or uh, having the camera continuously go in and out of focus during an action scene. That shit just, is not good cinematography. I think you just don't understand it, Jeff. I Maybe I'm not smart you. enough for Common Rider Drive Saga, Common Rider Chaser. Yeah. So you should shut your fucking mouth. Yeah, but there's a very sensual scene where a lady puts a feather on a guy's chest, so I guess it's got that. That's true. I uh, can also say I didn't really like the super convenient ending where Chaser forgets everything that happened to him. Was that necessary, though, is the thing. I, I was guess. it just like if it ended and he was like, I I will take my place as the hero of justice and not care about emotions, then people would be like, oh, now he won't get to feel emotions. How sad. He remembers. Well, I guess it's to make up for the fact that he doesn't mention it at all for the rest of the show. W- when was he going to mention it? Like, they're fighting somebody and he's like, hey, guys, remember when I felt feelings? I imagine him stopping and getting punched in the face. Remember that time I got the feather on my chest? You guys remember those times I feeled feelings? And then he <laughs> stares off into the distance. Data, I think you should deactivate your emotions chip. <laughs> That's a Star Trek reference. Why are you making a Star Trek reference? <laughs> I don't know. I know Data has an emotions chip. Yeah. He doesn't use it very often. I, I imagine. Only for the terrible movies. That, yeah, I uh, I thought this movie was okay. Yeah, Chaser. I agree. I, I think it had more, it had potential. If they could have done like a straight up robot who wants to be a human story and really made that the the focus, it would have been fine. I feel like they sort of, it was too unfocused and didn't have a very good payoff, and the ending was a bit convenient. Yeah. And also, Chaser is not the Chaser that you love for most of it. He's just some dude. Dude, the actor gets to gets to have some fun, but we don't. Uh, we as the audience have no fun during those scenes. No fun. The only fun I had in this movie is watching Go get fucking soda spat all over his face. He got drenched. And their reactions to him having emotions were the best part in the movie. Besides yeah. <laughs> uh, Terui Ryu from Double appearing. Oh, that's another thing I was going to say. Uh... Teruri, I, I guess it's 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 cool and it's funny that it's like a, on the very border. There's a dead body on the very border between Tokyo and Fudo, so the police departments are arguing over it. But at the same time, I feel like the whole scene was sort of it was shoehorned in. Totally, totally superfluous yeah, for no reason. It was absolutely shoehorned in for no reason. Yeah, just to get uh, Ryu in there. I would like for somebody to take stock of how many roid mutes are created and how many are killed by the end of the series and all the specials and see if it lines up. Like if they like if they actually depict the destruction of all 108? Yeah. You think? That'd be interesting. Or even if they just talk about it throughout the series. Like if yeah. they say we killed this many or whatever. Yeah, yeah. What if there's just some roid mutes like wandering around out there? They got all of them. I remember at the end Shinosuke's like after heart dies. He's like, we got all of them. You know what the weird thing about Kamen Rider Chaser is? What? At the the movie, anyway. Yeah. Uh, up until the very end of the movie, when it turns out that Angel is going to use the same process on humans, hmm. what's the problem? Up up until then? Because she's going to turn the roid mutes into... <laughs> the roid mutes are a horrible problem. They're killing human beings and causing untold damage. If she just stores their minds in her giant foam tits, they won't destroy anything anymore. It'll be fine. But she'll be all powerful. She doesn't say that. She just Does, says that she's she? she's gonna like draw them within herself, and they'll live forever in paradise. And that's her goal for the roid mutes. And up until the end of the movie, she doesn't mention doing anything to human beings at all. But she does at the end, right? Yeah, but Chaser is fighting her for at, at the beginning. Yeah, that's true for and a totally then, unrelated reason. Yeah, and then like. Towards the end, before 
he finds out about the humans before a convenient plot friend shows up with the feather on his chest. Mm. He's still fighting her. Yeah. To save the roid mutes? To save himself, I guess? Because she's, she's, look, she's a fucking roid mute. She's gotta die. Okay. She's gotta die. I that's think that's all. a, I think that's what we call a plot hole. Uh, yeah, it's convenient writing. It's, it's, it's writing that's based on an, uh, uh, an end and not a path to that end. There are some nice artful shots in this movie. The whole fight in the forest is really nicely framed. Mm. There's really nice lighting. There's some cool smoke effects going on. Uh, the fights themselves aren't really anything to write home about. Yeah. I guess I liked that uh, super, super chase, super dead grim reaper. What what the fuck was it called? He was super, super machine, machine chaser. Machine chaser. I was gonna super, let you flounder around for a while. I oh, that would have been hours. <laughs> I liked that uh, super machine chaser wasn't some horse shit that he pulls out of the last second to beat the bad guy. Yeah, but it's like actually a part of his arc. Like it's it's a part of the plot. He actually uses common rider chaser to defeat the bad guy at the end. Yeah, as he should. As he should. Also, uh, another plot hole that I guess you can is much easier to overlook is that she um, absorbs the souls of all the people who have feathers on them. Mm. And uh, while when they're in the forest and Super Machine Chaser is fighting her, she could have just taken his soul super easily. Why did she let him fight? Why did she let him fight her? Why don't you shut the fuck up? Well, why don't I stop asking perfectly logical questions? Yes. <laughs> don't ask questions you don't want to know the answer to, okay? Uh, it was alright, though. Like, I'm complaining about useless shit that no one cares about, but it was okay. Yeah, there were, there were good things and bad It was things. really great to see everybody back again. It really made me miss Drive. Yeah. Yeah, I'll say that. I, I, I feel a bit nostalgic for Drive now. All those great characters. Yeah. Oh, well. Gone now, replaced by uh, characters that don't even have personalities anymore. And ghosts. Replaced by Necrom. Oh boy. I think we did a good job of getting through all that shit, so why don't we oh, talk man. about some news? You mean some emails? Why don't we talk about some emails? Some some email to reward us. We have two emails this time around, but okay. it might take a little longer to answer one of them. Okay. Our first is from King Kor, or however his name is actually pronounced. K K K K. Hey dudes, still listening to the podcast, still enjoying it. Thanks. Thank you. I'm also still watching Ghost, if only because of pure masochi- masochism. Masochism? <laughs> Masochism. Mas- masochism. 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 Asthma. Pure Asimov. Okay. And at the same time, loving Juoger. It's almost predictable at this point that the more interested in a toku show I am pre-release, the more utterly boring and bland it is. True that. So I wanted to ask... What are your favorite monsters of the week out of any show ever? Probably just Common Rider. I like Vaulting Boxmonger. That's not even in Common Rider. Okay, he said any show. He didn't say any show, I added that. You... He actually did say any show. I pick Vaulting Boxmonger. You're a piece of shit. I like him. You're dumb. He's, he's a vaulting box. You're dumb. He disguises himself to get into a gym and then terrorizes the students... God, Sun Vulcan's great. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't watched Sun Vulcan, you should watch it. You really should. Um, that's a tough one. That really is. Uh, monster of the Week does not mean recurring monster, so that cuts out most of the cooler ones. From The stuff. more memorable ones, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say T-Rex Dopant from Kamen Rider Double because it made me laugh the most out of every... Show oh, I've that ever watched. Ridiculous outfit. With a giant fucking T Rex head just held up by normal legs. Does the fucking devil count from Jew Ranger? <laughs> I only remember that guy appearing in one episode. I guess he was only in one episode. It was literally yeah. Satan. Don't, all the, if you haven't seen Jew Ranger, the, the naming process for all the monsters is Dora something, like Dora Skeleton, Dora whatever. Uh, this was Dora Satan because it was literally just the devil revived. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, Satan appears devil. in Super Sentai. I'm going to pick Satan as my favorite monster of the week. Satan is Liam's favorite everything. That's true. 
I and like unrelated. Your unrelated, but Liam, since it's getting close to the time when info on the next rider starts coming out, do you have any predictions for what the next rider is going to be like since uh, you predicted Ghost? Okay, I'm going to tap into the psychic energies here. And I'm Predict say something it's... good this time, you asshole. Okay, I'm going to say it's a show uh, about hairstyles. And the main rider will be a mohawk. And the secondary will be a Rihanna hair fringe thing. And um, it's going to have great characters and story. God, I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> that sounds awful. <laughs> That sounds just awful. Can we get it's, a it's... real prediction? Okay, it's probably going to have belts in it. You know what? I hope that it's another fucking, like, wrist changer. Just to fuck I... you over. <laughs> I think uh, the only real prediction we can make at this point is I don't think Toei has quite learned their lesson yet. I don't think the toy sales are low enough. So I'm going to go ahead and guess that it's going to be another kind of paint-by-numbers series. Yeah. I, I hate to be the pessimist, but I think that's what it's going to be. You know, I do too. I don't have psychic powers that make things happen in the real world when I predict them, but I'm almost certain that's the way it's going to happen. Mm, that's a shame. We do have one other question. Okay. It's from Hotshot. Okay. He says, so guys, my question for this week is, do you think Alan will get an upgrade or super form out of popularity like Baron with Lemon Energy Arms? Is Alan popular? Alan's very like Alan. popular, yeah. Wow, I hate Alan. I actually don't like Alan at all either, so... <laughs> I don't know, I, uh, I like his new outfit. I hate his new outfit. <laughs> I think it's nice. I think it looks stupid as shit. Well, all of his outfits look dumb, but this one... His first looks... outfit looked cool in a bohemian kind of way. Yeah, this one's pretty bohemian. Why did he, like... To begin with, it almost seemed like this was going to be a completely different series. Because Alan is all mysterious, working behind the scenes, and he has, like, a poncho thing that's completely covering one arm. Mm -hmm. And he almost never uses that arm for anything. Yeah. So I was expecting him to throw it off and have, like, a fucking Akira monster arm, or have, like, a transformation device. That's way too cool to but... have an Akira monster arm. <laughs> but neither of those things happen. Yeah. It turns out he's just left-handed. Yeah, that's a shame. Alan is a... Uh, is a... Uh, I mean, just... He... He just kind of turned out to be another another Chaser. The the bad guy who turned good in a really contrived arc. But Chaser is a robot programmed only to know justice, which is well, awesome. And Alan is a wuss. <laughs> it's, it's Chaser, except you don't like him. Yeah. Alan is a wussy. And everything goes wrong in his life. And he learns no lessons from any of it until an old lady tells him. Yeah, it takes, it takes the Takoyaki lady dying. Now that the Takoyaki lady is dead, who is going to hammer life lessons into his fucking thick skull until he gets them? I have a question. When he was eating that Takoyaki in the warehouse, who made it? The ghost of Grandma Fumi! Oh my god, if she gets an icon, I'm gonna kill myself. And then you, I'll get an icon. You heard it here first. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. If Grandma <laughs> Fumi gets an icon, Liam will kill himself. Yeah, you can quote me on that, boys and girls. <laughs> Here's hoping. <laughs> uh, um, what the fuck I, were I, we talking about? Oh, do you think, well, Alan do you get think he's going to get an upgrade? Get an upgrade. No. Um, probably not. In the scans for Infinity Soul, it's it shows Infinity Soul, Ghost. It shows Deep Spectre, which definitely means that's going to be the last of him. Mm -hmm. And Necrom's just in his regular base form, so I think that's it. Necrom is Common Rider Chaser. He's literally Chaser. He's only going to have one form. He's a, Well, he's got side grades, unlike Chaser. Yeah. But Chaser yeah, had sucker. an axe. Chaser had a, a personality that people liked. Chaser that's, had that's hockey pads. More. It's worth more than any form. Yeah, Chaser was wearing goalie pads. I love Chaser's suit. I hate Common Rider Chasers. I love I it. I hate it. I like the helmet. I hate everything below the neck. When he was a super machine chaser, I was just like, please just fucking become chaser again. Please come Common Rider Chaser again. It's so much cooler. No. The spiky ass piss gold form. Get the fuck out of here. I I will, because it's it's time to go. Yeah, but as much as I'd like for Chaser to get like one thing, one little upgrade. Chaser? Even. Chaser. Uh Necrom. <laughs> To get one little upgrade even, I don't think it's going to happen. I think that scan pretty much disproves it. It might happen. Maybe in a movie. Maybe. Who knows? You never know. Um, I don't think upgrades are as necessary as Toei thinks upgrades are. Yeah, that's true. 
Uh, I could do they don't without matter grades. In, think about this. There were, in the crowd of regular-ass fucking Ganma in mm. this episode, there were two Javairs. Yeah. And one super version of a regular Ganma. And Ghost and Spectre used their base forms to defeat them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, forms don't matter at all. <laughs> wasn't was no, hang on, Jeff. It was boost form. I think that Ghost was using. Pretty sure. I'm talking about like in the scene when they first all transformed together, like when they in all the three one? transformed together into their stupid fucking call outs. Oh, 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 yeah. <sighs> Disgusting. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I mean, forms are mostly toy politics. We know. Yeah. It doesn't... There's no... Just fucking release Common Rider Ghost with scuba diving action and harpoon gun attachment. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Capture Claw Common Rider yeah. Ghost. You can... Street Luge Common Rider. You can... <laughs> you can go on the Common Rider wiki and look up the tons per square inch of the punch, but it doesn't matter ever in the no, show. Not at all. Uh-uh. And they list that shit. You can like, you could find out exactly how many meters each form can jump, but guess how much it matters in the show? Zero. None. Zero. Unless it's like a big thing like uh, Kuga's blue form, where like jumping is your thing. Otherwise it doesn't matter. The only show that I could think of that where it really matters, that they keep the power level stuff relevant throughout most of the entire series, is Gaim. And it's done in a very subtle way where like... Anytime one of the fruit users uses a special attack to kill a monster, if one of the nut users is there, they have to use the, a level ahead of that a special yeah, attack was, to do the same damage. Squash, Olay, and uh, Sparking, yeah. yeah. Which I thought was a nice touch. But beyond that, it doesn't even matter in that, even. Yeah, it's just a little detail. A little, little world-building detail. But it's nobody really ever turned important. into their base form and killed a bunch of shit that they couldn't touch before, so... <laughs> yeah... A good upgrade matters to the plot. That's why I like uh, Fighting Spirit Boost. It, it had a, a nice episode attached to it. It was a nice emotional yeah. scene. That's why I like uh, Jinba Lemon, because it was tied to the death of an important character, and uh, Koda realized he needed to step his game up. Kuga had a lot of forms, I understand that. Yeah, shitload. That isn't what made Kuga good at all. No. And series that have less forms tend to focus more on the characters. Instead of the forms. Like, yeah. I used to give Blade shit because the first 13 episodes are god-awful. But there are only three forms in Blade, and it is a character piece the whole way through. Yeah, it's, it's, you, you have the regular form, and then you have Jack, and then you have King, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Because you don't, it's the same with Ryuki. You have regular, and you have survive, and even then only two guys get survived. Yeah. Everyone else just has well, a form. Look at Kabuto. Everybody has a form, has their form, and one guy gets an upgrade. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You don't need them. I understand that it's toy politics. It's but toy, toy po politics yeah. has gotten fucking out of control at this point. <laughs> I'd rather have an episode Even... where a guy pulls out a gun that shoots tiny Kabuto zectors than have every episode be about the Kabuto zector guns. Like you can you can go back even as recently as like two thousand nine, two thousand eight. Like, it, it shows, like, Kiva and Hibiki, and it's not nearly... Well, Kiva has, like, five forms, six, something like that. That's true, but still, fucking, like... His forms are still, very difficult to tell apart, though. It's still not nearly as bad as it is today. No. And the, th the thing is, forms used to have solid purpose before. They have a function, yeah. Each of them a had a function. function. Like, you look, go back to Double... Every form in double has a function, and mixing and matching them has a function. Yeah, they modify each other, which is cool. Same thing happens in O's. I'm watching O's right now. Like, different combinations give you specific powers mm -hmm. that other combinations don't. In Ghost, your power is shoot gun or use sword. Remember, Benke has a hammer. Don't forget Benke. Oh, God. <laughs> it's They don't give them special abilities or anything. And that's fucked. Why have all these forums if none of them do anything special? Your power as ghost is you have a sunglass slasher. Yeah. Here you go, kid. Get also, your power is deep specter. Deep specter. Ugh. Ugh. I, I, that's the only thing I miss. I'm not against having a ton of forms. I just want the forms to do something special. Yeah, I mean, I like lots of forms. It's, it's always cool. 
but meaningful forms are better. It's Kuga's forms all had a specific function. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that was obvious. It wasn't just you get a weapon. You have the it's... fighting form, you got the range form, you got the mobility form, you got the defense form. Yeah, and That's you gain it. like special abilities with each. Like Titan's defense goes sky high, and he can walk directly through attacks. In yeah, order and it to happened. Attack. You you see it every time he uses it. Yeah. He just tanks hits. And his it's his obvious. like Pegasus form gives him incredible eyesight that allows him to pinpoint attack and stuff. And his dragon form gives him incredible speed and agility. And the best part is he talks about it, too. Yeah. There's bits where, like, he'll fight a monster and it'll get away, and he'll be like, maybe I'll turn green, I'll, like, see him better and shoot him. Yeah. And he, he's strategizing. I like that. What does Billy the Kid give you besides another gun? Two, two guns, Jeff. Okay, get your shit straight. The only thing that gives any specific ability that I can think of immediately is Houdini. It gives you a big, stupid motorcycle helicopter thing on your bike hey you can fly yeah. remember when ghosts could just fly whenever he wanted yeah what happened to that shit in the really early appearances he actually did you... that in this episode did he fly I don't remember yeah, him flying he, fl- in this he flies back and around a pole and then lands on his motorcycle and drives oh. there's actually some decent motorcycle action yeah although uh, I, I got mad during that part again why uh he drives up to one of the monsters and immediately turns into a CGI abomination as he mm-hmm. spins around and hits the monster with his back wheel. Do you remember Kuga doing that all the fucking time on a motorcycle? Yeah, Kuga had a lot of bike stunts. Like, he Kuga. would lift the bike, the back wheel of the bike up and it would do like a close-up of the wheel hitting. And yeah. then he would spin the bike around and land it. And it if was you have to all do... legit. Yeah, if you have to do a quick camera trick to make it, you know, to make it good and not dangerous, that's preferable to awful, horrible CGI. It was so bad. The CGI <laughs> on uh, Makoto's bike jumping and doing spawn chains all over the place wasn't that bad, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we've talked enough about Common Rider this week. Yeah, okay. So, we have a Twitter. It's at Rider Club Radio. We, we have, have an email. We have an email. What? Yeah, that's writerclubradio it. at gmail dot com. Send us an email. Send us a tweet. Uh, send us a picture of a tree. That's over. Comrade J Day already happened. Send me a recommendation for a book about pirates. You looking for a book about pirates, Liam? Well, I found one, but I want more. I recommend Treasure Island. I okay, no. <laughs> Everybody knows Treasure Island. Have you read it? No. There you go, motherfucker. Read it. <laughs> That's too mainstream. I can't read Treasure Island. Oh my Island. god. <laughs> Why don't you just read The Curse of the Black uh, Freighter? The pirate part from Watchmen. I read I read that part when I read Watchmen. That's actually a really good story if you it read it consecutively. Yeah. Anyway, uh, send anyway. us a tweet, send us an email, uh, interact with us. We'll talk about it on the show. Uh, you could follow our Twitter to get fourteen dollar T shirts from me since I'm a shill whore now. Yeah, Jeff makes common rider T shirts. Check them out. Uh, this week's shirt is actually Kiva, strangely enough. For so. some reason, people like Kiva. I got requests, so yeah, it's true. Anyway, uh, see you next week, everybody. See you.